The first thing is this opportunity to challenge. Um, I think there are two things that drive this. I think the first thing is the recession itself um, demands that businesses take cost um, out of their processes. Um, so that does force people to, to reappraise the way they work. Um, so I think use the opportunity to take cost out of the business to actually fund mid restructure. Don't simply slash 20% off all the budgets and walk away. You know, you can restructure, rethink, and you may find actually that you end up with something actually far better than you ended up with. Um, I think the second thing is a much more philosophical point, that actually it is a time for renewal. Um, it's a sense that some of the thinking took us into this recession and may not be appropriate anymore. So. We've seen through history that recessions are times for renewal, the times for companies to reappraise their values, um, how they operate, how they think. Um, new ideas come out of recessions, new businesses come out of recessions. So I think it's encouraging a sense of renewal and challenging every aspect of your business from the way you run your agencies to the way you structure yourself. Um, I think that's the kind of big opportunity. Um, the second sort of uh, mantra is this, this idea of trust and trusting the people. I think we're seeing what, what you could call a trust deficit everywhere in the world. Uh, nobody trusts anybody in business. Um, anybody in the suit is distrusted. It's not just bankers who are distrusted. We don't trust anybody at the top of organisations. And it's a fundamental problem for every business in terms of how to grapple with. Um, now, the solution for this is actually for companies to, to open up um, and to actually become much more trusting of their own employees. Because although we don't necessarily trust the person at the top of the bank, you know, um, as a cliche goes, I, tell he, I, I can tell he's lying because his lips are moving. Um, we do trust that uh, that nice man who saw me the pension or that nice lady who helped me with my mortgage. Um, and what you find is actually that there is a level of trust, there is a repository of trust in organisations at the middle and junior level. And the, sm and the smart companies are the ones who recognise this, so very simply put people on the outside in touch with people on the inside. You know, trusted their employees to talk to their customers. So situations like you know, Microsoft now have 6,000 employees who blog about the business. Sun Microsystems have claimed 6,500. There's a kind of arms race of openness going on there. Um, now, these, this is, a, in a sense, a very brave move. Now, these people have been trained. You know, having 6,500 company spokespeople is a real challenge. It terrifies most companies when you talk about it, but it's highly, highly effective in terms of earning trust and building relationships. So I think trusting, so not trusting your employees, but also then trusting the people, you know, trusting the people to collaborate in your business. There's been a lot of stuff written about crowdsourcing and crowd surfing and this whole essence of consumer collaboration. But again, smart companies have recognised Companies have an interest in getting involved in businesses and brands, you know, and if they're smart, they can they, they can work for them um, in that particular that particular way. You can look at the recession. There's two behaviours coming out of the recession, which I kind of simplistically describe as, you know, as retrenchment or renewal. Um, and there's a de and retrenchment's understandable. It's an automatic human instinct when we're feeling under pressure. You know, when we're worried, when we're concerned, we come in on ourselves. We get cautious, we get nervous, um, we start rationalising everything, we overanalyze everything, um, you know, and we're very reluctant. Every, every, everything, everything feels like a risk, in a sense. Um, the trouble is it's high, highly counterproductive. You know, it, you know it, we, we're caught in this horrible kind of spiral, you know, this sclerosis of opportunity where nothing actually happens. We, we're far too cautious, in, and, and unfortunately we're going to kind of caution ourselves to death, in a way. We have to encourage a sense of renewal. Um, and, I, and, and to me, this is a, you know part of this is, is a philosophy of kind of looseness, a philosophy of actually taking things in our stride, being a lot more um, pragmatic, if you like. Um, take something as simple as you know the business plan. The business plan used to be a fundamental. You know, when you went to business school, the first thing you produced had to produce was a business plan. All businesses have a business plan. But if you look at the top hundred fastest growing businesses in America, only 24% of them have actually written a business plan. You know, so 76% of these businesses are happily operating without a detailed written business plan. Now, that's complete madness, but it's working for them. So I think it's the sense of saying, you know, we can delude ourselves. I call it the illusion of certainty, the sense that actually, you know, we, we, we can, we, you have to have these things, these fundamental things in place. But I'm saying, you know what, you actually, to encourage much more philosophy of much more pragmatic view of the world, a much looser sense of what we mean by uh, a business plan, what we mean by the, the whole institute of what a brand is. The sense of a brand as being something that's kind of a fixed entity that doesn't change, again, is being, is, 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 is a kind of appearing redundant. A whole kind of looser philosophy, you know, talk, the head of P&G talking about we've got to, got to let go. We're li living in a let go world mm. now where certain things you've got to let go, stop producing beautifully polished pieces of work. Um, that consumers are supposed to revere and allow consumers to collaborate in the whole process of creating them. Um, and the fourth value, and probably the most important one actually, is about marketeers have to market themselves. You know, as an institution, marketeers don't have enough respect um, within the organisations they work for. 
Um, they're criticised for being fluffy. They're criticised for being not rigorous enough. They're criticised not for not contributing enough. And they've got to do a job. They are the change agents. They are the kind of right brain thinkers, the people who should be dragging their companies and institutions out of this recession with their bold thinking and their great ideas. That's what they're good at doing. Mm-hmm. But they only do that if they win the trust of the people who work with them. Thanks very much, Martin. Thank you. It's okay. Thank you very much.